Hey, I'm uh, Tyler Barris, or Farmer Tyler, and I'm here with Dr. Don Wilkerson. Don worked in the Horticultural Sciences Department for 25 plus years. Correct. And Extension, and you are an expert in fertilizers. Well, yeah, I mean, I have a, <laughs> I've got, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of experience in dealing with fertilizer for, uh, with a lot of different horticultural crops. Okay. So I know we've had a number of discussions about uh, plant nutrition and fertilizer, and I know that you are, uh, you are yourself quite a, uh, an expert. But, you know, so often it's important to start with some of the basics, understanding the fundamentals and the basics. So um, I think what we're going to try to do today is just talk about some of the more basic elements of plant nutrition. Uh, how plants use uh, plant nutrients, and then maybe a little later talk more specifically about some of the basics of fertilizers before you launch into some of your more detailed discussions on designing hydroponic nutrient solutions and using those nutrient solutions in a variety of uh, yeah. hydroponic production systems. Cool. Yeah, so this will be the first in a series of sort of 101 lessons. 101s. Yeah. 101s, that's right. I've got a bunch of other links to more advanced topics um, if you want to dig deeper, but this is definitely going to be the, the place to start. Yeah, like with anything, you really need the fundamentals first before you launch into more detailed uh, topics. Yeah. So, well, nothing is more fundamental than the concept of in plant nutrition is to, to uh, recognize that uh, generally there are 16 recognized uh, essential nutrients. And, you would think this is all pretty well established since uh, uh, research has been done in the area of plant nutrition yeah. for you know, hundreds of years, but uh, there's emerging information all the time. It, I, it always gets me because I always, it seems like people are like, oh, there's 13, there's 14. Like I hear the number moving around all the time, like aluminum being added. Vanadium, yeah, sodium like sometimes. But the 16 that are most recognized are, uh, and the, the, the oftentimes not thought of, are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. A lot of people yep. think strictly about mineral nutrients. Uh, and then, the, of course, uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, and then all the micronutrients, which are iron, zinc, manganese, copper, boron, uh, chloride, molybdenum. Yep, I think, I think you nailed it. I think those are all 16. <laughs> One of my favorite questions uh, that I used to pose to students or interested individuals is, what's the most important essential nutrient? And nine times out of 10 people say, oh, it's nitrogen. Yep. Well, again, that's a trick question because since they're all essential, the, the whole concept of an essential plant nutrient is that plants will not grow normally in their absence. So these are all essential, it's all the, essential. The limiting, whatever nutrient is limiting is the most essential at that That's moment. That's exactly right. <laughs> now they are grouped into different categories. Yeah. And uh, the three category, the three uh, general uh, categories are the macronutrients, secondary nutrients, and micronutrients. And almost everybody understands well the macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And the micronutrients, of course, there's a lot, there's always a lot of discussion about micronutrients because that's a difficult thing to manage in, um, in uh, substrate culture or in hydroponics. But one thing that we tend to take for granted are the secondary nutrients, uh, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Yeah, but so sometimes the secondary are actually taken up in higher quantities than your primaries. They, exactly. <laughs> but, and we oftentimes we don't have a, uh, uh, we'll have a, we'll obviously have a macronutrient um, nu uh, nutrient uh, strategy, how much yeah. nitrogen are we using, that's always a focus. But a lot of times, these secondary nutrients are left out of a out of a uh, out of a nutrient solution. So oftentimes, we see see things like magnesium deficiency simply because that's not a substantial component of a uh, of a of a recipe, so to speak. Yeah. So 
that people look at the bag and they see the, the three numbers, the, the NPK, and you think once you see that, oh, it has everything you need. Everything I need. But there's so, when so you, many more numbers that follow. Right. <laughs> so when you put together a, 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 a your regime, your nutrient regime for crops, hydroponic crops like this, yeah. What, what are you, how are you supplementing the secondary nutrients? Do you, do you have a separate magnesium component, for example? Yeah, so we have like our base, which is our 5, 9, 37. So that's, that's your the, macros. The macros. And it also has a little micro package in there. Yeah. But then to provide the secondaries, I have uh, calcium nitrate to provide the calcium and then magnesium sulfate, uh, Epsom salts, to do the magnesium and sulfur. Um, so yeah, pretty much all those secondary uh, macros are provided through a second, through a separate source than my, then my main base. Then you're, then you're right. And, yeah. and um, because you're in hydroponics, um, because the water is essentially, doesn't contain any of the essential. I mean, there are some residual, yes, yeah. but you have to supply everything. And yeah. in substrate culture, uh, sometimes those uh, secondary nutrients will be actually incorporated as a granule. Um, so, but, but you have to, you definitely have to think about for, uh, for most, most uh, horticultural crops, regardless of whether you're in a substrate or whether you're in an aqueous solution, you have to be thinking about supplying all of those nutrients. So it's important to remember, don't forget the secondary nutrients. A lot of times they're more challenging to deal with than, than the micros.